All right, guys, welcome back to the unofficial guide to Wirecast online course. In this video, we're going to be going over how to connect sources. And I'm going to talk high level first about how to connect sources, but also what are the types of sources that you should be connecting to Wirecast and what are the considerations that you should be thinking about when doing so. Now, first of all, the basic USB camera setup is probably the most popular way to connect sources to Wirecast. You plug in a webcam, you plug in a USB speakerphone, you bring those sources into Wirecast, and you've got the basis for a live production. And there's lots of different cameras, there's lots of different microphones, but essentially you're going to want to bring some type of live video into your production that you're live streaming. And we'll show exactly how to do that in this video. But first, high level, what would be like the next step up? What is a lot of a lot of people doing beyond the webcam? Well, the next step would be like a professional camcorder. And if you're in like a large space, maybe you need some optical zoom to zoom in from far away. Maybe you have one or two cameras. For one or two cameras, most people use capture cards. So in the middle here, you're seeing a USB capture card. That card will convert an HDMI or an SDI signal into USB. You can plug right into your computer. And there's a lot of benefits to this. In fact, I mean, if you have a camcorder with HDMI, it usually looks higher quality than a camera with USB, just a regular webcam. So there's better quality. This you know camera can zoom in long distances. But you can also, instead of HDMI, you can also do SDI. And SDI cabling can run hundreds of feet. So that this is a very simple way to run a camera 100 feet away from your Wirecast computer and plug it in. So very uh, simple but powerful way to add uh, some better video um, and audio to your system. Regarding audio, and we're, we're going to have a great Back to Basics Stream Geeks video about audio and video cables that we're going to play after this one. But essentially, there's, here's a couple of the common ones that you might see. XLR for connecting microphones, quarter inch cables for connecting instruments, and then 3.5 audio cables for connecting smartphones and, and other you know, small devices. On the video side, you're probably going to see Ethernet, you're going to see HDMI, you're going to see SDI, and of course, USB. Now, regarding these cables, um, it's important to know the differences between them. And the next video that you're going to see is really going to explain all the cables and the different maximum distances and bandwidths that you should be considering for your production. So I'll breeze over this quickly just to let you know, depending on the cable that you choose, you need to think about A, how far can this cable run? Because a lot of people come into issues where they've, they're running cable too far and the signal drops and it gets degraded. Two, how much bandwidth do I need for this cable? Uh, do I have enough bandwidth to support what I'm trying to do? Does my hardware have enough bandwidth to handle it? And those are the things we'll talk about in the next video. But going on forward with our conversation, the USB capture cards, that really maxes out at about two cameras. Uh, most computers can't handle more than two capture cards running at the same time. And that is because of USB bandwidth, which again, you will learn about in our next video. The next step up is to have a PCIe capture card. And PCIe capture cards actually get inserted inside of your live streaming computer. And it allows you to bring in up to four, or maybe you can get two of these cards, eight. We actually have three of these cards in our computer here, 12 live camera sources into your production. Now, the next thing you can do is you can actually get NDI cards. And what NDI capture cards allow you to do is convert HDMI or SDI into an Ethernet stream, an IP stream that you can bring directly into your laptop anywhere uh, on your local area network. So something to consider. There are NDI cameras, which you plug the camera into Ethernet. You do not need an HDMI or SDI capture card. And it goes directly via IP into your production, into Wirecast. So we will look at those uh, in this course. And there'll be a whole chapter on NDI. And then, of course, good old USB cameras. 
One thing that's probably new to a lot of you, and it's definitely was new to me as I was learning about USB connectivity, you're trying to plug in all these cameras and these audio sources and keyboards and mice, and you know, you're trying to plug in uh, an Elgato Stream Deck, and there's all these different things you're trying to plug in. Each USB device requires some bandwidth, and audio is tenderly low, tends to be low bandwidth, right? So the connection between the device and your computer might only be a couple hundred kilobits per second. But video tends to be a lot more bandwidth. And you know, you, you if you're using a USB capture card, maybe you won't get the best quality with a USB 2.0 port because a USB 3.0 port has 10 times the bandwidth. So just high level, because again, we're gonna look into this in a lot more detail in the next video. Audio devices, low bandwidth, Video devices, high bandwidth, like things like Thunderbolt and PCIe direct connections to your motherboard give you a lot more bandwidth so you can bring in a lot more camera sources. Cameras and video, high bandwidth, audio, low bandwidth. Now, some of the live streaming hardware you should be familiar with, obviously microphones. I'm wearing uh, an in-ear monitor uh, microphone now or a headset microphone. Don't cheap out on the audio. Audio is the most important thing. So get an audio inter interface if you can. So a lot of churches, a lot of different spaces have large audio mixers and that's great, but you still might want to invest in an audio interface, which is affordable, maybe like $100, that will take the XLR and quarter inch inputs and convert them to a USB signal that you can plug into your computer. Once you get that USB connection into your computer, Wirecast can bring it in as an audio source. There are There is something called virtual audio cables. And this we will be talking about when we start working with Zoom. Uh, virtual audio cables are awesome. They're now available for Mac and PC computers. Now, a couple of the different cameras that you might want to be aware of video source wise. We have document cameras, we have static cameras, and we have PTZ cameras. So Wirecast can work with all of these. A document camera might have USB, so you can plug it right into your computer. A static camera like the PTZ Optics Z Cam, um, that camera has the ability to, you know, have an SDI video feed, which can have 100 feet, 200 feet of cabling, but you will need an SDI to USB capture card to make that available to Zoom or a PCIe card. And then PTZ cameras is something we'll have a whole chapter on. The reason why is because Wirecast has a feature for controlling pan tilt zoom cameras, which makes you as the Wirecast operator the ability to not only operate the video production, but also control a PTZ camera. Now, high level, when we're talking about NDI, NDI stands for Network Device Interface, we're talking about sources on your local area network. What is a network? Well, a network is essentially your internet router, right, that is connected to a switch which is connected to all these different devices in your local area network. One of them being the Wirecast computer. The next one being an NDI source. Maybe it's another computer. Maybe it's an NDI camera. Maybe it's your smartphone, which has the NDI app on it, which I will be happy to show you guys all of that in um, an upcoming video. In fact, here is my NDI camera right here, and I can actually bring that in directly into Wirecast, and we will do that in an upcoming uh, tutorial. So there's lots of things you can do. That works over Wi-Fi. This is just a high-level look at what a network is, and when you have that network, you can bring video sources in via NDI. So for example, your main broadcast computer might be on your network, and then an NDI camera would be on the network as well. You could have another computer bringing in the video that might be the video output of your um, Wirecast production. And maybe that's for an overflow room or a different monitor so you can see what's going on uh, on another computer. And then you can also have like an IP controller or an IP joystick uh, helping to control your Wirecast or your NDI cameras. So a lot that you can do with NDI sources. There's a whole network tab in Wirecast. We'll go through that. In just a moment where you can bring NDI sources directly into Wirecast very easily. So back to the overall Wirecast interface here. I'm just gonna open this up. Here we go. 
just make sure that it's full screen. There we go. Wirecast. All right. So over in the, the Wirecast interface, as we are learning, we have the ability to add these plus buttons here. And there's five layers. Um, you can actually scroll up if you really want to see all five at once. I kind of That's kind of a tip. I like to see all five. And I like to do my camera sources at the bottom. So let me just choose a camera source here. Here's a camera source. This is a PTZ camera we can control later. But we'll leave it kind of as is for right now. And that will be an example of a camera source. Now, as you're going through and creating sources, you can star them. And when you star a source, what that means is it says, hey, Wirecast, this is one I want to use often. And when you do that, it will show up in the favorites area here. So that makes it really nice and easy to capture different sources and, and find them quickly and easily. Because as you'll see, there can be a lot of sources on your network. So we have the audio sources. We talked a little bit about, you know, bringing in your audio sources into Wirecast. That is how that is done. You can bring in your media files here. The network sources, these are going to be those NDI sources that you can bring in, right? And we'll be looking at that in an upcoming production. Um, this is just going to be a simple screen capture, which we'll use in the Zoom to, to Wirecast video, where we're going to capture the Zoom video into Wirecast. Um, these are different overlays, so we can do like a scoreboard overlay. This is like kind of a nice little example of an overlay system being used here. Um, these are really easy to use, these scoreboards. Um, you can do like a plus one, plus two, plus three really easily right inside of Wirecast. And those allow you to quickly and easily add all of these different scores. And uh, you know, to, you could say the home, and you could say maybe it's the Indians that you're playing against. Um, and it makes it really easy to, to manage like a scoreboard. So those are just some of the inputs. There's different backgrounds. We could bring in an entire web page. We'll be looking at virtual sets in the future where we'll look at some of the different virtual sets. And then you can have a whole playlist of shots as well. So hopefully that gives you guys a pretty good idea of what you guys can do with connecting Wirecast sources into your production. In the next video, I can't wait to see you guys. See you soon. Don't forget to use the comments to ask me any questions that you have about Wirecast.